Hi everyone, this is Karen Neal. I'm here to paint a bunny. I do a lot of uh, pet portraits. So I'll just say a quick hi. I don't know if you can see me. This is a new experience for me with the, uh, the video. So basically, my first step is the sketch. So I have a blue background, so I used a blue background paint. And uh, it's just a quick sketch. The next step is um, my underpainting. And the reason I'm doing this, I read on my camera, I can only do 25 minutes. So we have the underpainting, which helps me get a good start. And excuse my dog for barking. I ha don't have any control with that because I'm up here and she's downstairs. So, rabbit. The first thing I normally do is I work on the eye, because the eye in an animal is um, the soul. It's actually the soul, which I consider the soul of the animal. So um, I'm going to add some reddish brown color around the edge of his eye here. I always like, I may take some artistic uh, releases here on, on my part because I like to be more loose on my uh, animals in, in this instance. I also paint a lot of uh, realistic animals. So when I get to do portraits, animal portraits, I have to be very careful because I it needs to look like the animal. So I'm going to put the pupil into now, because it's, this is the dark color in here, and he has a little dark around here. So, um, sorry about the dog. I can't do anything about that. Rabbits do not bark. They make very good pets, by the way. So, um, they can be box trained. I've had many a rabbit that was box trained and um, like a kitty litter pan. So that's a good thing if you want a nice little animal that doesn't bark. Uh, <laughs> a rabbit is very quiet. Now I'm going to go in and actually go into some of the darker parts of the fur. I need to put this in here. Right in here, you can see that there's some darker in here. And again, I'm just doing this very loosely. Sometimes I, uh, when I'm painting, I do it in steps. In other words, this is going to be wet on wet, so um, it'll be a faster type of painting where when I let it dry in between and I do layers glazing, um, it, takes, it takes longer. So this rabbit is going to have a name in the end. And he has a little fur coming out here. Now when I do, when I do the wet on wet, I do a lot of negative painting. So um, I'm not careful about the edges because I will come back in after and do negative background and cut into the fur. Woo, I got a whole bunch of paint then. I set this paint up last night. I was supposed to do a demo last night, then the fire up in Yorba Linda kind of put a damper on that. So the paint's a little stickier. And this is water mixable paint. So it does dry a bit faster. But I prefer it because it's easy water cleanup and um, it's just, I don't know, I just like it better. I, it doesn't bother my eyes, the, the chemicals. So as you can see, I'm doing very, very quickly here and she's got some, she's now a she, so um, fur up in here. Now this has to be very quick, it has to be 20, I have to do it in 25 minutes. I may not get it done. 
I could probably do another quick step after that and, and show you the finished pro product eventually. I want to show you one little little um, trick that I've learned from a uh, oh where did I put that from a workshop a lady that I took from her name is actually Karen Karen Warner she showed me she showed us whoever was in the class at the time this neat trick now if you have a glob of paint here I'm hoping you can see this you have this glob of paint you take your brush and you Take the paint that way, that way, and then you shovel it in and you get a nice little glob there, maybe not quite that much. And if you wanted to do an edge, like in here, it, the animal's ear is kind of dark in here, so I'll use this dark. You, If you wanted to have more of a, a definite line, it's all you have to do is, is touch it like that and it goes right around. Or it, even if it was, if it was a square, just say there was a square here. Um, you just touch like that, that, and it can be either, you know, realistic or impressionistic, and you get a nice line. So that way of scooping this way, this way, and then scoop it, and then you can touch the edge and make a nice line. So I'm going to do this dark, this little darker spot here in his ear. And this is my first time videoing it, so we'll see how it turns out. Your Belinda may get it or may not, if it's not, doesn't turn out good. I mean, as far as, um, you know, my approach, uh, trying to get it done without making too many mistakes. Now, as I said, a rabbit can, this, and you always, when you're painting the rabbit, uh, or any animal, you always go in the direction of its fur. That's why I'm doing it like that. And down here, it comes like this. And he's a little darker over here with a little shadow. Now it's a he. I changed it from a he to a she. I have to put this back up here. And like I said, I really like to... Uh, work on the eye. So I'm going to go back into the eye and uh, work on that. But I wanted to get some of those darks in just to give me a feeling. So I'm adding a little reddish brown to his eye, her eye, his eye. I like to use, I've been using a little of uh, burnt umber and raw umber in this coloring. And this is a little raw umber I'm putting in his eye. We had a dwarf rabbit for years. Her name was Little Black Rabbit. Her name was Inky. And she traveled cross country when my husband was transferred. Traveled cross country with us in a little duffel bag. She and the guinea pig. And uh, did very well. It was kind of fun. Now around the outside of the rabbit has got a little bit of white here. Not white, but a lighter color. I added white to uh, the raw umber. And I'm going to add a little bluish white right here. Okay, now I'm going to work some more on the fur. I'm using a bound oh, this is a, only a four brush, but that's what I picked up, so that's what I'm going to use. Now the fur in here is lighter, so I'm going to scoop up some, some of that and add some white with a little raw sand and see what kind of color we get here. 
And then you can always reverse it. You know, most of you are, are artists. As I said, I'm taking some uh, artist ways of adding my own feeling to it. Everybody strokes differently. I've tried just the one stroke kind of a, a method, but I'm not real good at that, so I tend to like to do it this way. And it comes way over here. So I'm making him a little bit lighter in here. I want his eye to show up. And most of my sketches are very, very simple and basic. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm not, I don't like to draw much, so uh, that's not a good thing if, if you have the chance to take. I did take some classes, but I, I didn't really enjoy them. So um, I do recommend... Ooh, I got too much paint there. See that? It's always good to take a class. I take take as many, you know, classes as I can that I feel that I need help in. Now, as I put this dark, this dark in here, it's going to get lighter because, you know, you paint as you know, you paint dark to light in in oils. Um, except there's always exceptions, as you know. Now I could actually right here show you this scooping, scooping where I could go, if I wanted a complete hard edge, you could just go along like that. But um, he, this is a long-haired rabbit, so I'm not as concerned about the edging as I would be um, on, an, on a portrait, an animal portrait. So we'll see how this goes here. And his fur right over here, I just did it in the wrong direction comes like that and it comes out like this in this area. But you can see how he's kind of coming to life. I really like to work on the eyes. The eyes the eyes are what always catches me in a painting. Actually it it, it did the same thing for me when I was in high school with a, with a with a, a date. If the if the man young man had a nice eyes, I would date him. This kind of sounds silly, but my husband, same way. I liked his eyes. And it's 51 years later. So, if there's any questions, uh, you can always email me. And I'm hoping that you can see this pretty well. As I'm sitting here and I have no one working my camera. Uh, and this is my first time doing this. Now again, if I don't get it finished, um, I have to go in with the lights yet. The background will be the last thing, of course, as, as I said. Now I'm going back up here again. I, I'm not one of those that stays in the same place. And we're going, I'm going to be using a rigger brush to, to uh, bring out some of the fur. And then of course he's got whiskers. So that all could be later. Now I'm going to take some of this color in here. Now on this edging right here, his ear is kind of defined. So I was just going to kind of do this right there. And then in, in, in here, there's some dark. You can pull dark in after too. But he is a cute little guy. And a lot of times I just, I paint mainly for myself, uh, except, you know, when it comes to, <coughs> excuse me, um, doing commissions, then I really love it because I, I usually do those with uh, letting it dry in between and, and glazing. So um, that's really something I always enjoyed was the glazing part, which I never thought I would be that patient, and but I did. 
I like it. But you can see how his eye is in life, and we're not really done with that yet. I have to bring some darks in around there. I do portraits too. Uh, not many. I do some like of my granddaughter, but I don't. I don't commission them because I'm not really a, a portrait painter. Um, if it catches my eye, like the lighting or the look on her face, then uh, I do it. But otherwise. I don't. I stay away from portraits mostly. I do put people in uh, in some scenes. So this is coming along pretty fast. See, the underpainting really helps too because then you don't have any white showing through, and uh, it just helps to get it done, especially in a situation where you're you're demonstrating. So now. I'm going to come in with some lights up here in his ear, and I keep mixing this one. A little white and a little raw sienna in, into the raw umber. And when I paint, I, I also do use a lot of, uh, of uh, burnt umber, too. I do use blacks. But not all the time. I, sometimes I make my own black, but when I use black, I usually mix it with whatever color um, else I'm using in the painting. So if it had some reds in it and I wanted to make it uh, more warm, then I would put the red in the, in the black. Black also makes some really neat yellows. Uh, I mean greens, I'm sorry, you add yellow to the, to the black. So this guy's kind of coming to life, I'm watching the time. I think I've only got like 29 minutes, so I made, made myself say, okay, um, 25. So, I didn't know that, I thought I could paint forever, but I can't. So... Now I'm going to work a bit on his nose. And his nose in this painting really isn't pink like a lot of them are. It's kind of has the dark background with um, edges with some of that light fur color. So I'm just going to do it very, very loosely. And all in all, as I'm sitting here, I'm thinking, well, I really hope that you can, you can see this. So if it's no good, I, I can't do it all over again. I have to paint something else. We had uh, bunnies. We had a, I had a large one one time. It's called a Flemish Giant, and uh, we had it trained um, to use the kitty litter pan. And also, he would he had a cage outside. We had a little doggy door down in in the basement. This was back in Connecticut, and he would go out the doggy door into his cage. There was a cage, and uh, he would go out there and do his thing. He would just go to the potty out there and come back in. They seem to know that they don't want their domain dirty. So as I said, this is really, really a fast painting. Uh, I will probably go back in and, and touch it up later. Now I see that I would like it darker around in here. Oops. Right in here. And then just kind of a thing, little area down in here. And he's got some 
she's got, he's got some light right around here. 